rolling. I'm gonna have you do the classic. We'll say clap. take one, clap. Take one. My name is David Matthew Johnson. I'm the director of Ode to the Whale of Christ. When I was looking for figures, a church I went to as a child was called St. Therese and ended up being a, a big part of the later half of the development of my film. I'm a firm believer of a duality of meaning or a free interpretation. I think so many times people look at, at filmmaking as mainly, mainly narrative-based. For Ode to the Whale of Christ, burden is key, but at the heart of it, I wanted it to be something that you can look at it as a film of faith. You can look at it as a film of struggles in a relationship. A person I was talking to that after watching it, they related it to sobriety. That was an element that I personally didn't really attribute to while making it, but just this idea of your own personal struggles and the day-to-day -day need to maintain going forward. How it became silent while editing it, I was mainly focusing on the visuals. I really fell in love with rechanging how we edit a silent film, almost forced participation on the viewer's part, to feel like it's loud. This is what movies can be. My my goal as a filmmaker is to be proud of what I make. If you are putting your name on something, have it represent you. I want to know or learn who I am. And the best way I can do that is through making my own pieces. And what I feel me is when I finished Ode to the Whale of Christ, I felt like, okay, this is a part of me that I put into this film. This is a part of me that I experienced while making it. I'm proud of the work that I and my crew put into it. I'm also proud that we're able to send it to festivals and it to get some awards, some recognition. I thought the performances from both Jasmine and Mike were phenomenal. Jasmine just has such a presence. She was nominated in the Prague International Independent Film Festival as Best Actress Debut. She is the one carrying the figurative albatross and feeding it. She is going forward and addressing it in a way that she feels that is the right thing to do. But as the film progresses, she's getting weaker and weaker, and it gets to a point where she literally cannot carry him anymore. That's the moment she leaves the house. In that moment where she leaves, she's outside of the world. Uh, this is the Plato's allegory of the cave where we only see shadows as we're in the bottom of this cave and we look behind us and we see there's fires and puppets. And then as we slowly leave the cave, we recognize there's an outside world. Whatever it is that your personal struggle is, that's what he represents. He never speaks throughout this. It is constantly, he appears indifferent. Despite leaving your struggle, we often face the same struggles we left. And that's kind of the heart of each character's different figures within the concept of burden. They were both instrumental pieces within the structure of what we created. I'm here to create a Rorschach, if you will, for people to address their own personal burden. We all experience struggle. And when do we hit the point where we address it? So often making something, you will stop halfway through and you'll second guess yourself and you won't continue or you don't feel like you're good enough to make something. So actually being brave enough to put something out there and being brave enough to do that is something that I struggled with. So actually doing it and then hearing positive things and meeting people all over the world that are giving me praise for this. It's been a life-changing moment for me in that, okay, I'm actually good enough to follow through on something that's creative and that's, that's me. I know there will be people that watch this that, that will just eye roll and just be like, ugh. <laughs> but that's anyone that puts themselves out there that makes something that's different that makes something that's them. If you wanna be safe, you make something you don't believe in, that you know people will like. And if you wanna be loved, you make something you believe in. Challenge yourself to watch something you feel like you wouldn't like. And okay, what is enjoyable about this? And not in a demeaning way. See the things that people praise and love. Why do people enjoy this? And really embrace the, the church of cinema.